Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another breakdown. Today, we have a very special treat, right? As you start your cinematography journey, you have nothing but the highest hopes. You're going to change the world. You're going to tell stories for generations that will live on in infamy and really shift the cultural conversation. Um, and then one day you'll be sitting around and you'll get a, a phone call. And it'll be a producer. I'll say, hey, uh, you wouldn't happen to be available on the 22nd of this month, would you? You say, maybe. Do you have a, a provocative narrative feature film that I can help bring to life? Uh, or perhaps an experimental short film, right? Where we try something different, bold and new, and everyone can be excited. Uh, no, not really. Uh, it's a commercial. Okay, I can do commercials. Uh, definitely, I can help uh, bring this thing to life for you. Uh, tell me more about the story. What, did it, what does it involve? Who are the characters? Uh, lead me down the path. I say, well, it's a, it's a dog and two guys. Okay, great. What is it, a road movie? Something uh, we can really get into locations and really experiment with light and visual language? No, not a road movie. No, it's uh, really the dog has a cameo and then it's two guys and they're eating chips. Okay, chips, okay. Anything else? No, no, just chips. Okay, okay. Um, well, it's not really my thing. I'm more of a... Uh, I can tell you, though, it's, there's a tech scout day and uh, it's normal rates for the 12-hour shoot day and everybody on the crew gets normal rates and overtime and all that kind of stuff. You had me at normal rates. I'm in. Count me in. I need new deck chairs. Let's get this party going. And this is what you end up with. Hello, this is a framework dream. Look at this guy, the cinematographer just chilling. First AC panicked. Uh, sir, we need to shoot. Uh, have you heard of the framework? Yeah, sir, uh, that's not going to work because I'm eating chips. Yes, it will. Yes, it will work. <laughs> you believe me. There's a system that I have. I don't even have to get up. I can just tell you it and you can make it happen. I'll sit at the monitor. Look at me now. <gasps> You're not going to sit at the monitor. Yeah, I am. Selfie for the gram. Oh, swipe left. You know what time it is. Heart. And now the first AC gets the formula too. The DP gets the big chair. Told you. Phone a friend. We didn't even have to show up to the job. And that's it. That's the whole ad. <laughs> now, is it? Yeah, okay. There's a formula, right? You got to make this thing look nice. We've looked at 10,000 of these things. But it's just fun when you actually see it because this is, as a cinematographer in the commercial world, you would be spending 95% of your time doing these exact things. This is as retail as it gets. You're selling chips. It's a single location uh, with two people and the dog makes a slight cameo. In all of these things, you will see all five elements of the framework, uh, depending on, again, where you are and the style that prevails. Probably the only thing will be the change in the heat out the door, right? Everything else is going to be the same. If you look at the way this is set up, the, the orientation of this thing, if you know the framework, if you are familiar with what makes a good looking image that is easily repeatable and you can always get great results, uh, you see it here in every single shot. Now, you could make this scene significantly more complex. If you just put these two people in slightly different positions inside of the room. Just imagine, if you will, uh, let's go full screen. Can we do it first time? No, we can't. Yes, we can. Uh, just imagine, instead of the setup being this way, right? These two people are connected this way. The wall is also running this way, right? So they're parallel, running parallel. Perpendicular would be this way, right? So just imagine these two are now, instead of parallel to the wall, they're perpendicular. Changes everything. Makes it significantly harder. Um, not to say impossible, really good cinematographers can do it, but if you're starting out, why make it harder on yourself? Why not make it as easy as you can? Uh, can I get 15,000 practicals, please? And let's turn them all on. Let's just do it. Let's get crazy. So, should we look at... I guess we'll start here, because this is the easiest one, right? Immediately, what's the most important thing? Light from the window that you can't see, right? Because then, we're going to balance to this window, but we're actually lighting here, with a six by and a sky panel that's giving us this. And then this little hot edge is coming from somewhere else over here outside, depending on what kind of fixtures you have, uh, the truck that you have, the access to power that you have, that can all change. It doesn't really matter. Uh, none of that stuff matters, especially about the lights. Because once you get to this level, you don't even have to know the lights. You just tell the gaffer, hey, this is the kind of look that I'm going for. Put the light out there, make it nice. In here, make it softer, make it rappy. Let's have this dance party started because everybody's getting normal rates. Everyone's having a gay old time. Let's go. <laughs> and this is all you do. Uh, so well, should we do the, we should do the elements of the framework, right? First of all, 
if you're going to try and replicate this, like, oh, let's make a uh, chip spec ad, right? Because then we can sell this to other people. Chances are you're going to do it in your living room. It's going to be about the size of a shoebox. It's going to be white walls. There's going to be no depth. You're going to have some terrible brown sofa uh, that you probably found on the street, and it's going to turn out and look terrible. Why does this one look good? Because there's so much depth. Because the art department because the color, because the different practicals, because the color of the wall, the depth of the mirror, all these little shiny little elements in the background, all this little art decoration here adding depth. This is why it looks nice, right? A couple with the lighting. There's a couple of, of interesting takes in the lighting that you wouldn't normally see in um, what would I would say a more uh, Western style of commercial, the Western style of lighting as opposed to this style of lighting is a little bit different, but basically it's the same. And if I make my pen not quite as small, Let's talk about what those elements are. All right, we're gonna shoot into the L of the room. You can see that this is the corner of the room back here. We're shooting along parallel to the wall. We've got our light source that we're balancing to over here. That's providing all these levels, right? So if you control this, you can set to that level or you can set to the key level, which is this light here. You can see how it mixes in the hard light from there and then the wrap from inside. We're not pushing light this way, right? Because that would look terrible. We don't want that. We want this fall off that happens over here. All right, this is our little cheat code. Just have all the light come in over this way, over this way, and then wrap from the same side as the key. That's how you get this light over here. Now, what about the background? Well, we need the depth, so we're gonna add highlights in the background. We're gonna add elements to create richness, to create some depth. Uh, what else is in the framework? L of the room, upstage lighting, uh, room tone. I can't even remember the other elements, but you know where this is going, right? This is not hard. If you can do this shot, right? This is what I always talk about. If you can do this shot, you understand, okay, I'm gonna put the neg over here. I'm gonna suck up all of this light so I can create some depth on his face. If you can get this look on the face, you can get this look on the entire scene, right? It's just about knowing when you're doing the tech scout or the location scout inside the area, or if this is a studio, knowing how to set it up so you get maximum depth back here. So you can take advantage of all of these elements, take advantage of the cool colored room. Uh, that's what you wanna be doing. Now we go to the next one. Ta-da, this is the widest, this is the hardest shot. Right, because you could, again, you could light from this window, but you're probably not gonna be hitting these two with this light. You probably would have to hit back there, right? Because you're gonna want your lamp over here so you can't see it. And you're gonna have to go to the back of the room. That means up here, now you're gonna have to light from inside, which is, this is where probably the trickiest shot in this bunch is this shot, because now you have to balance these levels, right? If you light from outside, you don't really have to balance the levels because naturally that's how the light falls anyway. So as long as you don't have, you know, one lamp out here shining on th these guys, and then one lamp shining on the background that have extremely different levels, like two or three stops difference, well then you're in trouble. But here, when you have to light from inside, uh, this is the tricky bit, right? You can see, we're just getting over here on the cheek, and it's nice and soft and wrappy. That means the light is somewhere up here. You can see it's not on these walls over here, so it's not spilling anywhere. So we've gridded it up, we're hitting him, we're hitting him with a separate light, which is coming from over here, right? This is hitting the back of him, making him look nice. He's also getting a little bit of spill from whatever is up here. He's getting a little bit of wrap around there. We got this little edge here, which is probably, again, from this window over here, just hitting here and here. That creates depth. We're shooting through things. Look at all the different angles that are here, right? We got chair, chair, pillow, this thing, this little plant over here. Again, different angles inside of this wide shot and then filling this dark, paint here with these light colored woods and then 15,000 practicals, right? Very, very cheap power, wherever this is. Bingo chips, don't spend money on the chips, spend it on the power. So come in here, same exact thing. Watch the heat and how the fill changes on his face. Because as we go in, we can make everything prettier. See how much darker it gets on his face? This is really the only sort of suspect um, lighting choice here. Okay, we don't go shears, but we're gonna roll these down so whatever's out there can be blocked by this tree. Doesn't look too bad. We know the lighting setup. It just feels like it's a little bit up here for some reason. And I think it gets worse as we go closer. It feels like it's a little bit pushed up. So either they have something, see how I got the hot light slashing here, right? The soft hob effect slashing here, how this is hotter than up on his face. Um, so it feels like they may have like a bounce down here or something, or maybe it's an electric poly, but it's just, it feels a little bit uppity, like you can see on his nose, which is the only thing that I would say is strange about this whole ad, really. And then you decide, as a cinematographer, well, how hot do we want it out there? Because that's really all you're balancing to. Everything else is controlled internally. We've got a little tiny back edge on him here. 
again into the L of the room. It's just opposite. This, I mean, you really, you don't even have to look at the monitor here. You just know your levels. You know, as soon as you set the positions of the people, this is the easiest eight hour day you'll ever do. Um, especially when the art is this nice. You don't have to worry about white walls and boring stuff. It's just like, well, let's turn it on. Same thing here. How many eyelids do you count? Two, all right, from the window and then from whatever is coming up here. Again, you're getting that weird, it's like an uppy wrap here that's happening. And next, see that boom, there it is right there. You're getting this thing here and then this hot part of the cheek instead of coming down, which it would feel like it should hit here and trickle down this way. It's going, it's hitting here and then trickling up. But you do get an eye light. Maybe this just got, this guy just has some seriously set back eyes or something. Um, and they didn't like it. But you feel this faint little tiny whisper of a back edge just to help separate them. And he's not stuffed back here in the dark part where the dark side of his head is against this dark part of the background, right? Let's put him up against the window. So we get this nice little outline of him. And then wrap it around. And now you can see big, big, big highlights from down below. And we haven't changed anything though, right? Like this shot, where is it? Uh, this shot and this shot, the same lighting, the same line. This shot and this shot, you don't change anything except you soften it up and maybe you bring in the neg a little bit closer, right? And then this one we've already looked at. This one is just closer again, neg, maybe a little bit of an up sandwich there. And back to here, same chair, hot slash across, right? The soft hub special. And same we've already looked at, same we've already looked at. Not in focus. First AC fired. And cut. This is a weird angle. What? You actually get 12 hours for this? Yep, same thing. Ooh, see that little slash in the background? I like this back here. That little tiny thing just in there. Just a little bit of heat across the back. And then having a little bit of heat on the chair too, but our man is not standing in the heat, right? Our man is not being lit by this window. You could take this down if you wanted to, just by shining the light like if you move the lamp a little bit that way and you shine it back in more, um, that would take down whatever that heat is out there, especially here on this thing, um, but personal choice. And then this is the, man, if you look at the retail ads, like 95% of all jobs that you're ever gonna do as a cinematographer, you'll, this shot will be in there. And this is not the credit card shot that we always talk about in the framework. This is the opposite. This is like front lit. Um, but you still nice to break up the thing, have the color of the walls there, and then have the practical on in the background, not clipping or blowing out or being shitty. It's just a big soft source from the front. Um, normally you'd say big soft source from behind to have this fall over and have it get dark here so that the screen really sticks out. Because right here, really this skin is competing with this screen, um, which is the downside of front lighting it. Holy heat, right? Now we're getting hot on our man. And boom, there's the DP. That's the DP chair right there. It's like, yep. That is going to pay for the deck chairs for sure. And little did they know, it's all part of the framework. And we're out. Ta-da! Dog, just laughing. DP smiling. Anyway, uh, that's a look, right? These are the kind of commercials. Bread and butter. Uh, there's not really a story. It's just people eating chips. They want it to look nice. This is how you make it look nice. Don't know what else to add. Okay, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, we will see you in the next one.